Hi, here we are, how to draw a speed record car number four. Uh, sorry, I was gone over the weekend. Uh, it was my mother's 90th birthday and Mother's Day too, so I was out of town uh, going over there to celebrate with her. So I wasn't able to, uh, to post both days. In any case, here we go, and I'm continuing on the side of the car now. I want to uh, do the side of the car all the way to the back, at least to the, the rear tire. And uh, then I'll darken that up. Then I'm going to work on the uh, wheel and tire combination tomorrow. But uh, I wanted to get this done so that I at least had a start at coloring in the lower side of the car as far back as I can get it, like I say, at least till the tire. I know I'm not going to get all that done because I haven't worked on the, uh, the spokes or anything on the rear wheel yet. But um, I wanted to get this to the point that, that we're making progress and moving along and this is only number four, so we're doing pretty well so far. This is a relatively simple car. There aren't a lot of uh, differing uh, angles and things on the body. It's it's built like kind of like an upside down boat, like a, a canoe or something like that, I guess you'd say. But uh, you have to remember, this was even before World War I, and this is when planes were just what they were, and probably aerodynamics were not developed as well as they might have been. So people borrowed from other things, and I'm guessing that they borrowed from the shape of a boat, figuring that it moves through the water fairly well, it should move through the air, which is really a pretty good idea for what they had in the way of, uh, of experiments to, uh, to prove aerodynamics and see how they worked. Because really, until we put an engine on a car, they didn't go fast enough to make aerodynamics really that critical until you're uh, you're doing over 35 or 40 miles an hour aerodynamics don't mean much even though it seems like a lot on a bicycle that you're working against it's it's really not that that bad but if you were to do the same thing at 60 miles an hour on a bicycle it would be almost impossible to uh, to work against it for any length of time because you, it would just kill you working against the uh, the aerodynamics of a person that isn't streamlined anyway so uh, this car, like I say, did over 127 miles an hour, which is just unbelievable for the time. And I I just think this is such a cool car. If it hadn't been for steam cars, we wouldn't have had many cars around here. Until, uh, I think it was somewhere in 1918, somewhere around there, that was the first time that more gasoline engine cars were registered than steam-powered cars. So uh, that was a big change. And, and one of the things that made it so, so much better was that you could put a starter on a gasoline car and it would start up and you could take off in, in less than a minute. With a steam engine car, you had to go out and fire up the boiler and do all that stuff. And, and it could take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes in order to get the thing up to generating enough steam that you could take off. So. Uh, it finally just became a nuisance for people to do. I mean, they were fun and, and all that, but but they just weren't really practical for day-in, day-out stuff, especially if you were going to make a whole bunch of short trips. You had to start this thing back up again. It just really was, was kind of a pain. Plus, there was a scare campaign put out by other people saying that that steam cars explode and do this and that, and, and there isn't a lot of uh, documentation for that. But, there were boats that blew up, and of course there were trains, but uh, in the way of steam cars, they don't really think there's a whole bunch of uh, other than anecdotal type evidence that says that they actually did explode. But it may well have been, too. I wasn't there, so just guessing. Anyway, okay, here we go. We got down to the back of the, uh, to the front of the rear wheel, and now I'm putting a little bit of the shadow underneath the car. And that's going to be extended outward, too, once I work on the wheels and tires. Uh, there'll be a shadow that's cast by the sunlight coming in from there. But that gives you some idea. Um, I'm going to go over that, too. And the side of the car is going to be a lot darker. It'll be like the front of the car at the midpoint and rear. And <clears throat> that's how it's going to work. Anyway, uh, that's where we are for today. I hope to see you back tomorrow. We're going to do a lot more on the body. And... Uh, Start on that wheel and tire and try and get that done so we can get this whole car done. I hope to see you then. Thank you. Bye.